Well hello and welcome to Gmedism Total Notary channel. Today I will show you how to migrate your Windows 10 installation to a solid state drive. Well here it is, the new hard drive I shall install. It's the Samsung Evo 860. And uh, I chose in the size of 2TB to replace the drive I already have. Well, first step to install it in the computer is to have it in a nice safe place. So we have this little rack from our computer and it's a little bit big. Fortunately we have this little metal thing here which we can put inside the bigger rack. Well, it's now fastened with uh, two screws. It's a certain type, so hope you have that type. It's not very important, it won't spin around a little bit, but you don't want it to bash around. So now it's uh, basically fastened in this little tray here. You can put it in this little tray here, and now we're ready to insert it. Power off and unplug your computer. Here on the motherboard, you can see this. This is a SATA connector, or Serial ATA. Now this is the data connector uh, we will be using for this drive. It might be different if you bought an M2 drive, which you'll need to insert it in the M2 slot, but this is a Serial ATA drive. And here on the SATA Express, it's a different types of speed. SATA Express is one of the quicker ones. We have SATA 3, which is 6 gigabit per second. That is also something you want to use. If you have serial uh, ATA 1, which this cable goes to, which is obstructed here, it goes to my uh, DVD writer and it's serial ATA 1. And that is a bit slow for like modern hard drives. So make sure it's uh, serial ATA 3, SATA Express, or one of the quicker ones. Insert a little cable there. Just like that. Alright, and now we see the hardware cabinet here. We can drag out this. This is my current uh, little hard drive. You can see it li right there. It's connected with power and a serial ATA cable. Let's put this back in securely. Expose the uh, serial ATA cable we connected and the power. We bring the new hard drive and connect them up. Now we can insert this one securely. And there, the SSD is installed in the system. We can now begin to migrate our entire system. So, let's close this computer up and turn it on. In this little manual here, you can see some basic instructions for M.2 SSD installation, if that is the type you got. If you're doing this on a laptop, you can see that you'll need a little adapter to connect the hard drive to be able to migrate the system to it, since you can't usually have two hard drives installed at the same time in a laptop. However, some laptops have that ability, so open it up and check that yourself. When we start the computer, we can first check if the drive even exists and if it's even working. Now, right-click your Windows and select Control Panel or find it by Search. In Control Panel, you just search for Disk and here we can see create and former hardware disk partitions. Launch that. Here we can see we have the disk one, which is this one here, unallocated. This is the SSD and it's connected and working. Here you can see all your disks and DVD or CD-ROM drives. Before cloning over the drive, there are some things we want to do to prepare. One of these things is simply get rid of a lot of unnecessary files. Thus, empty your recycle bin. Beautiful. For the next step of our preparation, we need some software. Now, what you want to have is CC Cleaner. This we will use to clear up unnecessary files and clean up the registry a little bit. So we don't need to copy over useless stuff. So, download the free version or the paid version if you want some more features and just install it. The second thing we want is Windirstat, Windows Directory Statistics, which will visualize your data and make you easily see 
the biggest files which you can remove before cloning over. Now the cloning process takes a lot of time and if you want to decrease the time it takes you can basically remove large unnecessary files you don't even want. Pretty handy to use this tool. Then I'm using a Samsung drive and there are some different utility tools for SSD drives. Uh, Samsung Magician software has some features. It also have the feature to be able to migrate your entire system to the new uh, Samsung drive. So you can take the old drive and copy it to the Samsung drive using Samsung Magician. Now using Samsung Magician is very easy, but it doesn't have so many features as I'd like. So we are going to use Macroom Reflect, but I want to have Samsung Magician just to be able to install the firmware update. SSD drives may have newer firmware upgrades and this might improve the performance. So go to your manufacturer and see if they can provide you to uh, uh, download links for a new firmware basically. I'm going to use the utility tool Samsung Magician to install the new firmware. Then we also have the Macrium software. We are going to use Macrium Reflect 7 Free. This software will let us clone the drive with all the nice options I want to have. Now just go to the links in the description and you find this software here. You can see this here, Reflect Free. When we are on this page, we can select Home Use. Here you're uh, requested to provide your email. This is not necessary. Click Continue. Let it download and install this software. Here you can see installation package. Free is the right one to go just like that and we click download. Here you click next and the installation process will begin. Accept the terms and next. Then you select the home version and next. And then you just want to register for this and you click next. Desktop shortcut is something I want, yes. You can change the installation um, directory if you like to and just click install. Now I won't show you the installation process of CC Cleaner or Windowsstat but it's pretty straightforward. When you install CC Cleaner however uh, make sure to uncheck the button or it will force Google Chrome on you if you don't want that. Uh, any case that's basically that and now we're going to do some other things we need to while this installs. Um, right so you don't want your new drive to have any kind of problem or being locked or anything like that. Uh, so you better for safety reason, just make a full analysis of your system to analyze it for um, virus files or anything. Uh, like there is a very small chance of course, but if you have some kind of virus on your computer, uh, you might want to get rid of them in case you have some ransomware or something that would lock your new drive. Now it's not very high chance, but don't take any chances unnecessarily. Now, here we have Windirstat. I have already ran the scan and it have now put up all my files here for visual display. There's certainly big blobs. You can check what it is. Here we have MechWarrior 5. I want to keep that. And this big thing. Oh, look, a little test copy I got to test out uh, Star Citizen. And I haven't touched that for basically a year and it's probably going to be a while before I touch it again. So I can go and uninstall this Star Citizen big pack here. Well, I couldn't find an uninstaller for that one particularly. I also couldn't find an uninstaller for, uh, well, the game in Control Panel. So we'll just go to the overhead folder and we right click it and we just permanently delete this thing. Now be careful with permanently deleting stuff because if you do this, you can't uh, you can't un you can't undo this. Ta-da! 50 gigabytes free. Fantastic. All right, and of course, uh, if you have a lot of software you don't need, you can go and uh, open up Control Panel again. You find it by search if you don't find it any other way. Here we see Streamlabs OBS, for example. I don't need that one. I, I already used the other normal OBS, so I can uninstall this. So basically uninstall all the software you don't need for your new system and you will save some time. Uh, Samsung Magician is installed and what you can do is you can go to uh, Drive Details and in the Drive Details you find your drive here. Here is my Samsung Evo 
and here we can select update firmware. It's just basically click and OK, but it will restart the computer when you do that. So uh, do that later. We'll need to prepare some stuff before. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to go to the control panel, go to administrative tools, and then you see defragment and optimize drives. Now, if you run a drive like me, a hard drive, HDD spinning disk, it will defrag, it will be fragmented. And to defrag it, you go into here and you click optimize. And doing this will make it run a little smoother. And it's also a precaution, so nothing goes wrong. So I really would defragment a drive before copying it over. Now defragmentation takes a lot of time, so let your virus scan and let your defrag run and be complete. Then we also have the CC cleaner. Recent documents run, uh, empty recycle bin, temporary files, this you definitely want to check. And you can see what I've checked here, like you can check many things, but you know, the preset is pretty fine. Then you go to application and I'm using Firefox right now, so I don't want to clear internet application cookies, but you should probably, you know, it's, it's a good idea to clean it up from time to time. Fantastic. And then we just click run cleaner and it will search up these files and remove unnecessary unwanted files, which will, you know, which means you don't need to copy them over to your new disk. Fantastic. Now, if you have some software is up, that you are trying to clean, well, then you need to uh, agree to this box and it will close down Firefox to clear out the history and stuff like that. Well, I run CC Cleaner fairly regularly, so it only removed three gigs, but you know, if you don't run it very often, it probably will have removed a lot more. Right, so then we can go to the registry and uh, basically let this all be shipped and select scan for issues, fix selected issues. Um, it will ask you to make a backup. It's probably a good idea to make a backup. I never bother. Uh, fix all selected issues and close. Fantastic. Now we don't need to copy over those invalid registry keys. And that means we're done with CC Cleaner. All right, defragment is done and all scans are run complete. Fantastic. So now I will update the firmware. If you don't need to update any firmware, you might as well restart the computer anyways to make sure that all the deleted files are really deleted. Anyways, I'll update this firmware, restart the computer, and then we will begin migrating the drive to the SSD. Computer has been scanned computer has been cleaned of unnecessary files and the computer has been defragmented. Now we are ready to clone the disk using Macroom Reflect 7 Free Edition. But first, to make sure nothing changes during the process, it's best to disconnect the internet. So turn off your Wi-Fi or unplug the computer's internet. Internet is now disconnected, as you can see in the lower right corner. OK, make sure that all programs are turned off when you're doing the imaging process and don't work on your computer. Just leave it be and do nothing with Internet disconnected. Now we can start Macroom Reflect 7. Here you see the drive and here you see the drive we want to copy to. So what we do is we click clone this disk. Now select the disk to clone to and make sure you select the right disk. Now what you want to do is you want to drag down all of these. Then we can uh, click on clone partition properties. And here we see our primary drive here. And uh, what we can do here is we can increase and decrease the size. If your drive you're copying to is much larger, you can make this larger or smaller. When copying to an SSD, the lifespan of the SSD will be longer if you do something that's called over provisioning. That means leaving some of the space unallocated. 
just not formatted and just leave it be nothing on that part. And uh, the amount that you want to leave unallocated is about 10 to 20 percent. So we will go and select something around 200 gigabytes of unallocated space. Then you will click OK. And now we can click Next. We click Next. And here we can see the operation copy to partition. And we copy over all these parts. We need to copy over all the parts to make sure it's a clone. If we do not copy over a part and you don't know what it's doing, something may stop working. That's why we just copy over all the parts. And then we'll click Finish. It now asks us if we want to make a save of these uh, options we just selected. Now it will start to clone the system. If you're asked to confirm this override of the data to be overwritten, make sure you've selected the right drive and click continue. Now just let it copy over and leave it be. We turn off our computer and well, we open it up because now it's time to switch the drives. The easiest and best way to do this is to take the old drive, disconnect its SATA cable, the data cable, and the power cable, and you lay that aside. Then you take the new drive, drag it out, and uh, you switch the old SATA cable, which uh, it has, and then you instead connect in the SATA cable of the drive you're replacing. Then we install it. Now this drive we just replaced, we need to lay it to rest. Because if we have any type of issues with our new drive, we want the old drive to be available to us if we need to use it, if the new drive is working or fails. Because of this, I will let my drive lay unused for about a month before I write it over. Now, let's try and start a computer. You don't always have to do this, but you might need to set the boot menu. To set up the boot menu, you will need to get into BIOS, which you can do by delete. You can also go into the boot menu directly if you have that option, but I just went into BIOS here. To change the boot menu, you will go to BIOS and Features or anything else that seems relevant and you will find Boot Option. Under Boot Options you want to set the Boot Option 1 to Windows Boot Manager. So Windows Boot Manager should be the first boot option. Then we can just click Save and Exit. We can now let the computer boot. And there we have it. Computer successfully gets into Windows. Well, I hope this video helped you. Thanks a lot for watching and do like the video if it helped you. You can subscribe to the channel for future videos like this or any other type of computer tips. If you also want to, you can of course donate to the channel. In any case, I'll see you in future videos. This is Jimmy Desen Total Notary Channel, signing out.